Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a DESIC equation. DESIC basically means we have x to the 10th power in our equation. We have x to the power 4 plus x to the power 6 equals 2 times x to the power 10. And we're going to be solving for all x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'd like to put everything on the same side. Let's go ahead and put everything on the right hand side like this by subtracting x to the 4 plus x to the 6, setting it equal to 0, and then splitting up the x to the 10 into x to the 10 plus x to the 10. And the reason behind that is I want to factor this expression by grouping. And one of the things that I want you to notice is that the sum of the coefficients is 0. You probably know what that means. And if you don't, don't worry, we're going to talk about that real quick. But this allows you to basically group these terms into two groups and then factor each one. And then eventually you're going to get a common factor. So for these two, x to the 10 minus x to the fourth, I can see that x to the fourth is the greatest common factor. Inside we have x to the 6 plus 1. And then we take out x to the 6, which is the greatest common factor again, and we get x to the 4th minus 1 equals 0. I know some of you are thinking, why don't you take that out, blah, blah, so on and so forth. That's going to come up a little later, okay? So we'll talk about that as well, don't worry. But now, we do seem to have a common factor. Just That's going to be coming from those, right? Not currently. So let's go ahead and break everything down as much as possible. For example, x to the 6 minus 1 looks like a difference of two squares if you consider uh, or write this as x cubed squared minus 1. So we can kind of write it as x cubed plus 1 times x cubed minus 1. By the way, this problem is going to give you a lot of practice on factoring. So <laughs> bear with me. It's a little long, but you'll really get to practice a lot. So, and x to the fourth minus 1 is also a difference of two squares, which can be factored as such. Now, this is not the whole thing. x cubed plus 1 is a sum of 2 cubes. x cubed minus 1 is a difference of 2 cubes. And this is a difference of 2 squared. See, I told you th there's going to be a lot of practicing uh, factoring. So, let's go ahead and factor sum of 2 cubes. x cubed plus 1 into x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. And then x cubed minus 1 can be written as x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And then x to the 6, I don't know if it's going to fit here, we'll try to fit that. And x squared minus 1 can be written as x plus 1, x minus 1. And then the whole thing is equal to 0. No room for 0. Now, let's go ahead and find out what the common factors are. I do see an x to the 4th, and of course x to the 6 contains that. And then we do see x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1. So those are the common factors. In other words, the greatest common factor of this sum is x to the fourth times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Let's go ahead and open up brackets because we might have something in parentheses inside this. And what is left? From here we get this, x squared minus x plus 1, and this, which is x squared plus x plus 1. And from the second piece, notice that we took out x squared, so we end up, I mean x to the fourth, so we end up with x squared, and then this is another leftover. And that's it. Okay. And of course, this is equal to zero. Now let's go ahead and simplify this as much as possible. Great. So a lot of factors emerged here, but we're going to get a little bit more than that. Now, these two, when multiplied, you'll probably recognize this. It's actually a difference of two squares in a different way. And obviously, we could do it differently. So, for example, you could treat this as a difference of two cubes and then proceed differently. But it'll give, give you the same thing, anyways. Just wanted to say that real quick. But when you multiply these two things, you're going to get something like this. x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. It's kind of interesting, right? I mean, if you factor this, you're going to get that. Plus x to the fourth plus x squared. Awesome. Now, this is nice because not only we have some factors, but also the expression inside the parentheses, the quartic one, is also going to turn into something nice. By the way, that should be a 2x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1. What's nice about this quartic is that it's biquadratic. In other words, there is no x cubed, there is no x, so we can do a basic substitution. Let's go ahead and call this y. And don't ask 
y, okay? But from here, by setting these equal to zero, I'm getting x equals zero, x equals negative one, and x equals one as solutions. But guess what? We're gonna get more. So let's go ahead and find out. If you replace x to the second with y, this is gonna become two y squared plus two y plus one equals zero. And the quadratic formula tells us y equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is four minus four ac, which is eight. That's gonna be a negative four. In other words, you're gonna get two i from there. Nice. And of course, you're supposed to divide it by 4 to a, right? Don't forget that. And if you simplify this a little bit, that's going to give you negative 1 plus minus i divided by 2. Nothing special. It's modulus, obviously, is pi over 4 radians or actually not pi over 4. What am I talking about? This is the third and uh, I think the second quadrant, right? Second and third. So that, that should be 3 pi over 4 and um, 5 pi over 4. <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. That's my number y, but y is part of the problem. It's not the whole thing. Pi is x squared. So we kind of have to set this equal to x squared and then find x values from here. And how do you find them? Basically, you can do the following. You can try, for example, suppose x squared is equal to this. Okay, let's just take one of these. The other one is going to be very similar. And uh, what you can do is you can find the square roots of this number, but let's go ahead and write in the polar form first. And uh, notice that uh, this can be written as actually, if I take out a root two, so in other words, root two over two, and then I can kind of write this as e to the power i times, and since this expression is in the second quadrant, I can actually write it as i times, uh, what is that value again, three pi over four, right? Yes, great. So that's x squared, if you cut it in half, you're going to get the square root of this number times e to the power i times 3 pi over 8. Find these values, cosine, sine, and so on and so forth. Multiply by those and you'll get the x values. Fairly easy, no big deal because I still need to talk about the second method. I can't wait. All right, cool. So our original equation is as follows. By the way, I call this an interesting equation. You know why? Because think about it. I add the powers, 4 plus 6 is 10, and then I add the coefficients and I get 2. That's not an identity, obviously. It's not, it doesn't work. If you do it incorrectly, you'll get that. But this is only true for specific values, as you've seen with the first method. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of putting everything on the same side, I'm going to factor it. I'm pretty sure you thought about this. And you're probably like, why didn't he do this? You know, you should have done this. I know. I, I can hear that. But anyways, we kind of see that x to the fourth is a common factor. But notice that what happens if x to the fourth is zero? That means x equals zero, right? So that's a solution. Let's put that uh, somewhere, <laughs> put it aside. But now assume that x does not equal zero because we already got that out of the way. Uh, we can go ahead and divide both sides by x to the fourth and we're gonna get some solutions from here, but they should not be zero and they won't be, okay? This is gonna give us an interesting equation, a hexic one, right? From a desic, we get a hexic. It's going to be very hectic and we can solve it. How do we solve it? First of all, notice that two minus one minus one equals zero. You know what that means? It means the sum of the coefficients is zero, which means X equals one is the solution. Aha, great. So now we can go ahead and manipulate this expression really painfully. Let me show you the painful method and then we'll go with the less painful method. So we can kind of write it this way, two X to the six, since X equals one is a solution from factor theorem, x minus 1 must be a factor, so I can kind of manipulate this as follows. 2x to the 6 minus 2x to the 5th, plus 2x to the 5th minus 2x to the 4th, plus 2x to the 4th minus 2x cubed, plus 2x cubed minus 2x squared, plus x squared, because I have a negative x squared, minus 1 equals 0. Great. Oh, what? <laughs> Too painful, right? <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. Now, I can take out 2x to the 5th, and that'll give me x minus 1. I can take out 2x to the fourth, that'll give me x minus one, and just keep doing this until you hit the end, and then 2x squared, x minus one, and finally, this is x plus one times x minus one. Notice that x minus one is a factor, we already talked about it, and the other factor is 2x to the fifth plus 2x to the fourth plus 2x cubed, plus 2x squared, plus x plus one, equals zero. Great, x equals one already known, what about the other one? How do we factor it? Okay, great. This is also factorable by grouping. It's like groups within groups, kind of crazy, right? We can take out 2x to the fourth, x plus one, and we can take out 2x squared, x plus one, and we can take out one, x plus one, 
and eventually this is going to give us x plus 1 times 2x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 and we have an x minus 1 and we already had an x to the fourth which means that we get the exact same thing nice same idea and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye